All right, I'm gonna help you get started with the ESP32 Thing microcontroller from SparkFun. I'm first of all, gonna write a very simple program that's gonna blink this light, and then I'll show you how to troubleshoot the connections. So after you installed the Arduino IDE from arduino.cc, uh, you can go to File, Example, Basics, and Blink. Now, you may already have this program installed on your computer. You can just search for it under the Windows icon. After you load up this example, what I want you to do is to remove these comments. And you can see that comments are placed between these two markers right there. Of course, you could read through those comments, but I'm gonna delete them for the purposes of this video. You can see that the first thing we have here is some setup procedure, and then we have something that's gonna loop. In other words, do something over and over. To write this program to the microcontroller, you just click the right arrow to the uh, right of this checkbox over there. You can see a progress down at the bottom. It's going to tell you about the connection status. It'll give you errors down here that I can help you troubleshoot in just a moment. But right now, we're not going to get an error because we're successfully connected to COM port 8. What we should see is that the built-in LED is set up for an output. It's going to go on for 100, or excuse me, 1,000 milliseconds, which is one second. And then it's going to go off for that same length of time, one second. Now what we could do, uh, instead of using the built-in LED, is we could really use any one of these pins that are out here. For example, what we could do is say, let's just make a new pin here, uh, just integer, and let's, let's call it uh, like a blue LED, like this. And we could really use um, another one of these pins, pin four, I can put that over there, for example. Pin four and put a semicolon out there. And I could put a blue LED out over here with a resistor and connect it to ground. And then that means that what I could do is just replace this built-in LED variable with a custom variable. So I can use any one of these pins, well, most of them for input and output. I'll show you how to figure out which ones are inputs and outputs. If you write this to the board, what you're gonna find out is the LED is gonna stop blinking because it's the wrong pin, obviously. So I just wanted to show you that it is indeed you know, programming. And if we had pin four connected there and had an LED out there, we'd certainly see it blink. But I'm going to change this to pin five now that we see that it successfully turned off. So now that the built-in LED will at, at pin five will continue, will uh, start blinking again. The other thing I want to do is modify these delays so you can see a little bit different behavior um, in the process. As it's looping through here, we have it on for one second, off for one second. Let's just make it blink really fast. So high for like a hundredth of a second. And so we run that. And this is gonna look a little bit different in the pattern that you see for the blinking. See down here, the progress. You can see that it's blinking for just a short amount of time almost like those tower lights that we see off in the distance at night. So if you um, have any connect kind of connection issues, um, well, you most likely will if you've never used it before, you're gonna go to tools and then make sure you're connected to the correct COM port. One of the things that I do is I disconnect that cable and reconnect it and I see which one of these numbers appears when I connect it. And that's how I tell which one of these to select. So you can see that's what I did earlier before this video. I selected COM8 after plugging it in and seeing that appear. So COM1 is something else. The other thing that is likely not set up properly when you first begin using this, the SparkFun uh, ESP32 is this is normally on something like uh, Arduino Uno, right? So that's usually what the default is when you install the Arduino IDE from scratch. So what you have to do is install the, um, the resources that it needs for the ESP thing, uh, ESP32 thing. So what you can do for that is go over to Google and you Google the phrase ESP32 thing board URL. And the reason I knew to do that is if I go under preferences, it allows me to specify what the additional boards uh, I can program using this Arduino IDE. So if I do that and let's see, hit enter, you see the first thing I come up right with right here is it tells you how to install um, these new resources using the board manager. And I go through these installation instructions right here and I locate the URL. So I grab that right there. This is a stable release and I paste it right into here. Now I've already done that. 
but yours will most likely be blank. At that point, what you'll need to do is go over to the board manager and then load up or install the uh, resources for the ESP32. And that means that once you get to right here, you can hit click on the install. And then what will be available to you after you follow those steps is it will look like this. You'll have this right here. And then you look for the Spark Fun. It says 32 up here, but we're looking for the Spark Fun 32. So that's kind of how you um, make the connections before you start programming the uh, microcontroller. To learn more about the microcontroller, you can just Google ESP Thing 32, um, or ESP 32 thing rather. And uh, you'll see more about the board right here. You can tell from our video that we've already made the solder connections right here, made to buy some extra parts that come along with it. They make a suggestion about what other things you can buy down here. One of the things that we bought along with it was the motion control. So uh, what you cannot see in this video is underneath this, well, you can probably see it down there. We have a motion control shield, so it can measure acceleration in the X, Y, and Z direction. And you also have a port here for um, GPS, which I'll be making a video about that. And the SD card, I'll make a video about that. And also um, the ESP32 thing itself um, has other features like uh, Bluetooth and um, internet capabilities. And so you can look through the documentation about how to do that, but I'll make some more videos to help you through that. This is a really useful resource for this uh, microcontroller. Uh, you can click on this to see the pinouts and what their functions are. All right, I'll see you in the next video.